This is Kelly, principal of Pensbury High School, and I want to welcome you to the 1987-88 school year. We want you to have a very successful and rewarding year here at Pensbury High School. And what we'd like to do today is to remind you of some of the things that will be very, very important for you to remember as the year goes on so that you can do well in your classes, and avoid any problems uh, that may occur. I'm Mr. Corral, assistant principal of Pensbury High School. I've been in the Pensbury School District a total of 27 years, <clears throat> 12 of them here as an assistant principal of Pensbury High School. And at this time, I would like to review for you some of the rules and regulations that pertain and will pertain to you as you move throughout the year. One of the things you should have in your possession from former years is a student conduct policy booklet. If you do not have one, there are available in the main office, and I would suggest highly that you would read all the rules and regulations that will pertain to you and the entire student body as we move through the 87-88 school year. Some of the highlights of these rules that I might point out to you are one that pertains to clothing. Uh, Clothing is to be worn that is acceptable in school. Shorts are not to be worn. Uh, outdoor hats are not to be worn in the building. We got in trouble for this, Stuart. Another 
rule that is very important for the safety of all of us is that there is no running in the halls. And the reason for this is, of course, that we have people on crutches, people in wheelchairs, people walking out of doors that can be and have been seriously injured by people running in the halls. So concerned with is that possession or use of alcohol or a controlled substance can lead to your suspension from Pensbury High School. Look at them go, look at them kick, makes you wonder how the other half lives. In case of a major offensive involving this type of situation, it's possible that you could be expelled from the Pensbury School District and never be allowed to return. Well, that is very much concerned with the safety of everyone is, of course, a rule prohibiting fighting. Fighting can result in your uh, being fined for disorderly conduct, suspended from school, uh, or either or or both. And one last rule I think that's important, since this is an institution where learning should take place, one of the things that we prohibit, of course, is what we call an inordinate display of affection. This means that students are not to kiss, hug, uh, any type of this activity inside the school. What's the record of your field hockey team? Well, Dave, right now we have about, we're one, two, and three. Well, that's not as good as record as you had last year. Um, is there any problems with the team, any uh, weaknesses? Defense right now is doing very well, but having a little bit of trouble on offense with nobody being able to score. I guess that would be a problem. <laughs> like to know, do you find it any pressure on you that you have to repeat your perform your uh, great performance from last year? Not really, it's just kind of doing the same thing as we've always been doing, so. Score! Quick score! Great shot, it looks like number 16 scored that for... How's the team performing this year? Uh, the team's got a lot of potential, but we're just not performing that well right now. It's a fairly young team, but uh, next year they should be good. But this year, uh, I don't know. I don't expect too much out of them.
your team's three and five this year, rather disappointing to previous years. How do you think your season will end up? Well, you know, in the beginning we had a few, you know, a few tough matches, teams that were uh, out of our league, but now the teams in our league, I feel we can uh, mostly beat them, except for Council Rock, which will be tough, but we're going to try very hard against them. changes here. I think uh, Coach Keith was a lot more positive. Um, I think the attitude's kind of changed. Uh, I think there's been a lot of different um, people have come through that we've been looking for. Okay, Boucher on the left-hand side brings it up. Shot on goal. It's in. Oh! Oh, but that is Beautiful. Boucher. Oh, my God. Boucher with the
Do you uh, have a prediction here for the game? Oh, we're definitely going to win by about 10 points or more. No, nah, I don't want to make a prediction, just that we're going to come out on top. These two teams... Falcon Field today, where it is minus 22 degrees here up in the press box. It is cold, and here we are up in the press box bringing this game play-by-play -play paint along with Andy on the ball accent, Andy. Well, Dan, I'd just like to correct you. It's minus 11, but it's still freezing here at Falcon Field. He's got some room! Look out! Drive into this pass! He's going down the sideline! It's over! Touchdown! <laughs>
1987 homecoming queen, Missy Mycock, senior.
Vince Miller, the captain of the 1988 boys bowling team. Vince, you guys had a, a great year. Vince, yourself, you bowled uh, extremely well this year. How would you evaluate uh, your performance? I just try to help the team as much as possible. Well, when I bowl bad, the team tries to, you know, to pick me up. Same way around. the girls gymnastics team. Amy, we heard that you had a really good season this year. What do you do to prepare for these meets? Well, we practice every day after school at Bucks Gymnastics Center, and it's a lot of hard work. It's, it's usually for a few months, and we practice every day. We hear that you had a couple girls go on to states this year. How did they do? They did really well. Um, Stephanie Jones, who's a freshman, plays on bars, and Pam Fox, I think, also plays on bars, and she's a sophomore. That's great. I'm here with Tony Bradley, member of the 1988 Boys Swimming Team. That, that counts rock me. What an exciting meet that was. TV Sports was there, and I commented it was an exciting moment for me. How did that moment compare, compare with you to the other moments in the high school swimming career? 
Well, Dave, that was, sure was no short cookies to me either. Uh, I was pretty excited about that. That was a big win, you know, the last relay and everything. Uh, well, I just got to tell you, it was one of the high points, you know. It just doesn't get much better than that coming down the last relay and all. had a pretty good year considering you only had two seniors. You guys are close and just missed winning your division this year against Council Rock team. We did. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty tough meet. It was kind of a letdown. But we figure we're getting a lot of good we're getting a lot of good underclassmen next year. A lot of freshmen coming up from eighth grade and they should bring the team right along and we're hoping to crush rock next year. with Andy Axon, a member of the 1988 Pensbury Falcon basketball team. Andy, you had an up and down season, but pretty well compared to the other years. We had a great season this year under Coach Sharp. Yes, we started out rough with a 1-5 and five record, but as soon as we started in the Suburban 1 League, we came back and we mounted a winning record the first um, in three years. Coach Troy setting up Mike Jones to slam. Jones to slam. To slam.
what are some of the um, charitable contributions that this Interact Club donates to? Well, we're affiliated with the Levittown Fairless Hills Rotary Club, and pretty much we give our money to the Levittown Rotary Club, and they disperse the money as they wish. Okay, and how do you um, raise this money? You pay for it? Well, we have uh, various activities, such as our volleyball tournament, which will be this Saturday, March the 12th, and uh, students are asked to form their own teams at Pensbury, and there's a $75 uh, cover charge per team, so we're getting $75 a team, and you know, when we have like 10 teams, we're raising quite a bit of money for the Rotary Club. I hope that you're what you see, I do it to myself, that if I had someone Hi, I'm here with Adil Desai, president of the Forensics 88 team. Adil, Forensics, a lot, a lot of people in the high school do not know really what goes into preparation of each debate from which you guys enter into. What type of um, stuff helps you get ready for it? Okay, well, for the team debate, Dave, it's a year-round preparation because in cross-examination debate where you have teams, you have the same topic for the entire year, and it requires a lot of preparation. For Lincoln-Douglas debate, which is one-on-one, -on -one, the topic changes every three months, so it requires more in-depth analysis of each topic. Now, in other events, like humorous interpretation, you get a cutting of a play or something, and then you make it so that it appears funny for around seven to ten minutes, and that has to be memorized. So there are memorization things, and then there's also speaking events.
with the drum major Lou Rappaport. Lou, cross seas to China. How, how's that? How was that uh, brought about? Well, one of the band parents just happened to be talking to someone in China where he does business, and one thing led to another, and here we are. We're working out for China. Today it may be jazz, but tomorrow it's the main event. An old I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set on you. Got my mind set. <laughs> Also, for Pensbury High School principal Naomi Kelly. I cried. <laughs> it was so exciting to look and see all these people lined up, obviously so impressed. And just being able to share that with so many people was just uh, a feeling of um, feelings of emotion that you can't express in words. You rarely see more than one child per couple. That is because it's against the law. Today, for the first time in history, foreign musicians will perform and also offer a... I went numb all the way up and down my back when the trumpets started playing like in Brotherhood. Oh my God. And it's even starting a big chapter in their life is ending. And to stand there with emotions rocking your very soul calls for the discipline that makes for a great band. This is a the USA. Pizza, 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 pizza.
the bone bar. Australia practicing up there to help the people out. Give it not on the East Coast. Six feet under. <laughs> and hopefully behind some desk pushing a pen for a couple mil a year. <laughs> I see myself in the FBI or CIA. Oh, sorry. Traveling at a moment's notice. Here you go anywhere oh, in the United States or the world. Thank you. 
also playing varsity sport, tennis, and you're very successful at it, is it hard to keep your class rank and your grades up during the varsity season? No, it's not too hard, because tennis only takes up a couple hours each day. It gives me time to go home and read some books and stuff. All right, well, that's it. Here we have from Pensbury High School, Ken Dash, a number one student and a varsity member of the Pensbury tennis team. Thank you very much, Andy.
really good vibes coming from you guys.
Well, um, crew is doing a great job. The offensive line have, has sporting t-shirts this week that say, Pensbury offensive line, king of the trenches. And they've been living up to that reputation as it's second down and two with just over five minutes left in this game. They come out in the eye formation with Lee split to the right. So they pitch out to 42, James Biley. He tries to take it outside, but Dave Piano on the sham, he comes up and makes a nice hit. Dave Piano made a nice hit as he came across a, his, from his linebacking position. Her White had a nice block, but couldn't pick up all the players. Okay, that'll be a third down and two. Once again, the Pensbury Falcons bench is chanting boards. We are now under five minutes. As you hear the fans going, ho, oh, that's what the Pensbury line does. Now we're getting the fans to do it. This is just Falcon fever. Okay, in the T-set formation on short yardage. A quick handoff to, to Troy Vincent around the end. He's got a first down. He makes a nice move as he's down to the 10-yard line. First down and more. It'll be first and goal for the Pensbury Falcons. Troy Vincent as smooth as melted butter. He crossed out the left side, and he caught the Neshemny defender flat-footed. He said, look out now. I'm coming right across you, and he brought it down for a nice first down gain, Andy. That was a great play by Pensbury. They lured in the... The Chamonix defense are thinking they faked a quick handoff to Herb White and pitched it to Troy Vincent, who just showed his stuff. They were short of the 10-yard line by about a half a yard, so they still have a chance for another first without a touchdown. Well, that's unlikely. Sarko brings it out in the pro set. Key split to the right. Hand off Herb White as he's popped near the 8-yard line. Herb fought off a tackle at the line of scrimmage and then plunged for another two yards. Second and uh, about uh, eight as Troy comes in. Uh, there's an unofficial statistic by uh, Troy Vincent. Troy's 114 yards in the game, rushing with nine carries. A quick stat brought by our uh, producer here, Al Wilson. Andy, your call. Okay, second down and seven. Keys split to the right. Vincent split out to the left. Bodley and White in the backfield. Zarco, quick handoff to Herb White. It, they're having a hard time running the balls. He stopped about the five yard line, and that'll bring up third down and about five. Again and again, they keep tiring down that defensive line of the Chamonix. The trenches are being won by Pensbury here today, and they're just keep feeding it to their backs so that keep picking away at that defense. A little note I picked up from John Madden of NBC Sports. When there's a close play and a pile up, if the pile moves, Either way, you can tell which team has been winning in the trenches. And all day, the pile's been moving in the Pensbury direction. They've been winning in the trenches, and they've been winning this game 18-0. As Zarko brings out the third down. A fake handoff, he'll take it himself. As he does some driving of his own down to the two-yard line, will be fourth down and one. And Let's see what they do, Dave. Andy, I'm pretty sure they'll go for it. I mean, they, they've had the momentum with them. And Zarko impressing me with a nice, a very nice, Plunging effort. He was driving those defensive backs like a linebacker. Well, the fans, the fans are behind him all the way, and you, you see that that guys in the huddle. They're pointing, go, go. They really want to just stick it to the chamney. And it's fourth down and one. They got a yard for the first and a half, a yard and a half for the TD. He split out to the right. Vincent to the left. Two backs in Bodley and White. The chamney has all 11 players. Quick handoff to White. 
superb showed his true de uh, determination. He got popped and tried to get back and keep running, but sorry, Herb. It just doesn't go that way in football. Herb, good try, but that'll turn the ball over, but it's deep into Shamley's territory with the ball about the half-yard line. Pensbury fans still applauding. They appreciate the effort. There's still only 148 left in this game. As, as the time ticks down, sort of the hopes of the Shamneys winning this game, as Dave usually says. Dave, everything's just going crazy here at Falcon Field. Fans don't believe it. I don't believe it. They're playing phenomenal. Timeout call. Andy, uh, to I'm, sh I'm sure all the critics that picked up the, the Shamney are probably hiding somewhere in the eastern Pest Pennsylvania. Well, as I read over the newspapers, uh, almost all the critics said the Shamney will win. And, and just a few stuck their neck out and took Pensbury. That's just, that's just true confidence in the Pensbury team as they lead 18-0 with just 135 Andy, left. Andy, a good point you have there, but I'd like to mention another point. The critics really don't can't really call this because the coaches, I read in the paper that the coaches, they picked the Chamonix 5-1. to one. Um, All the teams that have played against the Pensbury and the Chamonix, they picked Pensbury 5-1. to one. And only a couple of them really did make a decision, like uh, Council Rock coach Schneider picked Pensbury, a couple of other coaches. So, they've really shown their stuff here in the day and a good call by the coaches. Okay, Knox carries the ball up to the five yard line, gaining him about three. This will be second down and seven for the Chamonix Redskins. I think, it, I think it's a little, a, too little too late here for the Redskins. Yeah, a, a big massive crowd is lining up on the right side ready to congratulate the players, and they really deserve it. Rob, Mr. Buckingham is telling the fans to wait off until the time is clicked off. It's a sweep out to Knox on the right side. He's stuck up by Banner Lucas and looks like number 23, Rob, excuse me, 30, 33, Matt Kiernan. Kiernan and Banner roughing him up down in the corner of the end zone as he gained zero lossing of yardage. Nowhere was he going. Time ticks down. 40 seconds left in this ball game. Everyone's just ready to celebrate here. As Vergentino hands it off. He's got some running room. He gets over to the first down. Number 23, Rob Whitlock makes the play. And he, under 20 seconds left, this place is gonna rock. The Chamonix fans filing out. Pensbury doing all their scoring in the first half. And I'll imagine it'll be their fifth shutout at home this year. Or fourth, excuse me. Quick handoff to Knox, he's hit. Six, five, four, three, two, one, yeah! and it's over. It is simply beautiful here at Falcon Field. The only way to describe it is beautiful. As the Pensbury Falcons upset the Chamonix Redskins by a shutout, 18-0. Pandemonium at Pensbury Falcon Field. As you see the fans going crazy, the, the coach is going crazy, the whole place is rocking. Let's go along with James Polly. Ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare to sign off, we leave you with the following Falcon scoring highlights. The 71-yard touchdown run by Troy Vincent on a dramatic counter trap. An Andy Zarco quarterback sneak from the one-yard line. And once again, Andy Zarco on an eight-yard pass to Jack Keyes. The final score, Pensbury High School 18, John Chomps and the Chamonix Redskins 0. Coach Jim Dundell in the final game here at Falcon Field. Celebrates Thanksgiving early as the Falcons break the bone before Thanksgiving. For all the TV sports screw here at Pensbury, this is Al Wilson signing off. Okay, Pensbury brings out in the T formation. Number 81, Jack Keys left. Eric Broadway split out to the right. Zarko, handoff to, back to Troy Vincent. He cuts it upfield, and he's got some room. Look out! Troy Vincent is fast. He's going down the sideline. It's over. Touchdown! <laughs> Touchdown! Touchdown! The place is going crazy. Second play from scrimmage. Troy Vincent with just 11:08 in the first quarter breaks a 71-yard touchdown run over the left side. Falcons take the lead 6-0. I don't believe it. Troy Vincent, one of the strongest.
side, got a nice block by Piero Forte. He brought it and he was gone. Nobody even touched him as he brought it down the left side. Explosion by Troy. On the one half yard line, Dave, go ahead. If you think about it, they got two plays here to get the ball in. That's a great point, so they'll go for it on fourth down. Okay, big play for the Pensbury Falcons. T-set formation, Zarco looks it over. Look for the QB sneak here. Is this a QB sneak? We wait for the call, and the referees just don't want to make the call. Things are stacked. Touchdown! Andy Zarco brought it himself. This place is going nuts. Andy Zarco on the quarterback sneak ups the score to 12-0 with just 6.26.